actually, the, the 2000 edition began in 1991 uh, while I was studying uh, for the summer in Germany in, a, in the little town of Wolfenbüttel in a very important uh, library there. And one of the people sitting at a desk not too far from mine in the, in the reading room was Robert Kolb, who is a professor at uh, St. Louis. And he and I began to talk about some of the uh, improvements that we could make in the Tappert edition uh, and some of the things that were left out. And also, we reflected on the fact that the students are very different in the in the 1990s and the 2000s than they were uh, when Tappert was preparing his um, volume. Um, from those initial conversations, we then contacted uh, Augsburg Fortress Press, which had actually published uh, the uh, Tappert edition, and um, then uh, contacted translators, and once again we wanted an ecumenical work. This time, for the first time, we had an editor both from the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and from the uh, ELCA. Uh, together then, we, uh, uh, we did our own parts in translating. Uh, uh, I did the small catechism. Uh, we got Jim Schaff from uh, uh, Trinity Seminary to do Luther's large catechism. Um, Eric Gritsch from the Gettysburg Seminary did the Augsburg Confession. Um, and uh, uh, Charles Arendt, who was also from the uh, seminary in, in uh, uh, St. Louis, the uh, Concordia Seminary, uh, did the apology or the defense of the Augsburg Confession written by Philip Melanchthon. So all of that kind of together, we uh, put together a team. We had readers uh, look at it then afterwards. We polled over 100 uh, Lutheran theologians getting their opinions of the Tappert edition, what they'd like to see changed. Um, we did several things different. Um, we uh, updated the language uh, where in the past we had used, as was appropriate in those days, the words like man and men to translate the Latin homo and homines or uh, uh, the German mensch and menschen. Uh, we actually did a more accurate translation to say human beings or persons, uh, individuals, depending on the context. Uh, so we changed the language somewhat. We changed some of the texts because in the intervening 40 years, historians had learned more about the, the texts that were used in the Book of Concord, the original texts. We changed some of the translation as we, learned, we had learned more about the Latin used in the Renaissance and also the German, which was a, an evolving language in the 16th century. Uh, so we uh, did some things. We uh, expanded greatly the uh, introductions to each of the works and also put in more footnotes to help students who are not, as they were in the 1950s and 60s, uh, very often trained at a Lutheran college. Many of our students are not, and so they need more background information. Um, all of those things combined to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, produce this uh, new translation in 2000. We added things, for instance, to the small catechism that had been in the original small catechisms and also in the original publication of the Book of Concord that we didn't know were there. So Luther's marriage service and uh, his baptismal service are back in the Book of Concord, having really uh, not been in earlier uh, versions. And uh, his preface to the marriage service is so helpful to, to free pastors up when it comes to marriage ceremonies, where Luther's first line is, many places, many customs. And, and you get a sense so that you, you try to shape the marriage service to the needs of the particular community. Um, so, and, and the text of the defense or apology of the Augsburg Confession is a different text than the one uh, Tappert used. And uh, we see Philip Melanchthon pouring over his original and changing things and actually shortening things so that he could be uh, more succinct. I think, though, that for my theology, which is a different answer to your question, theologically the thing that most struck me was how to translate certain words. The word in German, stand, or stand, S-T-A-N-D, had been translated as state which is a proper translation in the 1950s, but unfortunately by the 1990s all of my students thought it had something to do with somebody dying and leaving an estate. Whereas the word stunt, and this was a suggestion from Eric Gritsch, 
is now translated as uh, walks of life. And after we made that decision, we discovered that in the 16th century, occasionally in Latin documents, where they also don't have the word, the German word stand, they translated it the same way as types of life or walks of life. And to talk about Christianity as calling us back into the world, into all the different walks of life, whether we're a parent in the family or a child, whether we're in the workplace as a, as a boss or as a worker, uh, whether we're a citizen or someone who is doing the governing and so on, all of those then are these walks of life. It was a brilliant um, translation move. Or take another example. Here was a, a problem that we had because it, uh, the text read, God is mensch und mensch is Gott, which had been translated, God is man and man is God. Well, we wanted to use the more inclusive words, human beings, but how do you translate that talking about Christ? And so we came up with saying it this way, God is a human being and a human being is God. And the depth of that of what that means to say, to confess, when we confess Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we're saying God became a human being, and this human being is, in fact, God. That line in, the, uh, in one of the later documents in the Book of Concord, in the Formula of Concord, to me is what Christianity is all about. God became a human being. God is a human being, and a human being is God. If you ask me then, what's your favorite or one of your favorite parts of the entire uh, Book of Concord, then the answer would have to be, there's this section in uh, the uh, Article 20 of the Augsburg Confession which talks about faith and works. And in that article, uh, Philip Melanchthon, who clearly is the, uh, is the drafter of this, of this particular article, he, he makes clear that the faith we're talking about is not the faith of devils. It's not just the faith that you have where you believe the truth of, of what the Christian church teaches, but rather that it is confidence in God, a true trust and confidence of the heart. And always that, that line, that faith really is that confidence, reminds me of my mother and reminds me of the story that she told. When she was about 21 or so, uh, she uh, decided to join a, a Lutheran church and she had not been confirmed and so they required her to go through the entire catechism uh, and her pastor sat with her every Sunday, uh, Saturday morning and, uh, and um, uh, went through the different parts of the catechism. Good old Pastor Biterweeden. And uh, so she sat there every Saturday, and, and one time uh, there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, she went from uh, Bethany Lutheran Church. Uh, she uh, uh, walked towards the, uh, the trolley stop to take her uh, back home. And, and as she was standing waiting for the trolley, it suddenly hit her that Jesus died for her. And she was completely overwhelmed. She, she, uh, she broke into tears and she ran back to the church. Well, by this time, there were people actually in line waiting to talk to Pastor Biterweeden about uh, 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 taking communion the next day. In those days, they used to have to register for communion individually. And she broke into line, burst into Pastor Biterweeden's uh, office and said, Pastor Biterweeden, Jesus died for me. And he looked up and said, yes, Janet, that's what I've been trying to tell you. And that's saving faith. That's this faith that is then trust and confidence in the heart. Finally, it, it, it dawns on you, uh, this gift of faith from on high, uh, wrought by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Jesus died for me. Jesus is my Lord, as Luther puts it in the small catechism. 